Hi everyone. In this lecture, we will be discussing the introduction to discrete time systems. So basically, what is a system? A system is a collection of functional blocks that work together to produce an output signal in response to an input signal. We have already covered this part. So just I'm brushing up these things for you. Fine. So there are basically two types of system. One is what continuous time system. Another one is what discrete time system. So a continuous time system processes continuous time signals, while a discrete time system processes discrete time signals. Fine. Now examples. of discrete time systems include microprocessor okay microprocessors shift registers okay and semiconductor memories and semiconductor memories so these are some examples for a discrete time system hope this much is clear to you fine now let's move further the transfer function of a system determines its response or output in another way the response or output of the system depends on the transfer function of the system we'll see this what is the transfer function and all in upcoming lectures just now be aware like the transfer function of a system determines its response or output hope this much is clear to you now let's move further and understand the representation of a discrete time system fine okay okay so basically this is a discrete time system fine so it is what it is essentially a collection of interconnected elements that operate on a dt signal known as input signal or excitation right based on well defined algorithm okay and this operation produces another dt signal known as output signal or response of the system fine and this h is what this h denotes the transformation also called as operator so x of n is what input to this dt system y of n is what output from this dt signal so you can represent the response y of n is equal to what h of x of n okay where where this h denotes denotes the transformation the transfer mesion okay also called as also called as operator okay so if you have to read this you can read like this so y of n is what basically y of n is the transformed version of x of n x of n is what an input y of n is what output so this output y of n is the transformed version of x of n fine let's move further now let's define a discrete time system okay so basically discrete time system is what basically a set of elements 
which are connected together in order to operate on a discrete time signal called the input signal or excitation. That is what I explained in the last image, right? According to some well-defined algorithm to produce another discrete time signal called the output or the response of the system. So this is what discrete time system. It is built based on some algorithm or you can say some algorithm is fed into this system. Now based on that algorithm this system will work. So x of n this is what basically it is an input signal for this system input signal right so this discrete time system contains some algorithm so based on that algorithm some processing will take place on this input signal and finally you will get what y of n which is basically known as what output signal output signal fine so this is the good definition you can write in the exam with this diagram or the last diagram anything is fine okay so hope you are aware about this now let's move further now we will discuss LTI systems so let's see the LTI system so here the L T I L stands for what L stands for linear okay T stands for what time I stands for what invariant in variant don't worry about this terms we will see this terms in detail but just now just aware about the LTI system definition so L stands for linear T stands for time I stand for invariant fine so linear time invariant systems are systems that satisfy both linearity and time invariant conditions so that is the definition for LTI system or in another way you can define the system satisfying both linearity and time invariant conditions are called linear time invariant systems LTI systems simple we'll see this what is linearity what is time invariance nature we'll see each and everything don't worry now last let's discuss about impulse response okay impulse response so this is a DT system I have this DT system fine discrete time system now when a unit impulse del of n right when a unit impulse del of n is the input to the DT system the resulting output okay is referred as impulse response of the system and denoted by h of n simple okay so what is the condition so when the input to the discrete time system is unit impulse that is del of n then in this case the output is called as what impulse response of the system and it is denoted by h of n okay hope you understood it is a simple thing when the input is what when the input is del of n which is unit impulse then in that case the output is called as what impulse response of the system and it is denoted by what h of n fine so and you can say like h of n impulse response h of n is equal to what is equal to transform of del of n okay so basically if you see this h of n is what transformed version of del of n h of n is what a transformed version of del of n so that concludes our discussion on the introduction to discrete time systems. In the next lecture, we will explore the representation of discrete time systems through block diagrams and signal flow graphs. If you have any questions,
please feel free to ask in the comment section don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you